Hey guys, let's worship together. And I'm caught up in your presence And I just want to sit here at your feet I'm caught up in this holy moment Sing it I never want to leave Sing I'm not here for blessings Oh I'm not here for blessings Cause Jesus you don't owe me anything And more than anything that you can do I just want I'm sorry I'm sorry when I've just gone through the motions I'm sorry when I sing another song take me back to where we start I open up my heart to you sing that again say I'm sorry I'm sorry when I've just gone through the motions. I'm sorry when I just sang another song. Take me back to where we start. I open up my heart to you. Sing, I'm sorry when I've come. I'm sorry when I've come with my agenda. I'm sorry when I forgot that you're enough. Take me back to where we start. I open up my heart to you. Sing it. I'm caught up in your prayer. Never want to leave. Sing, I'm not here for blessings. Oh, I'm not here for blessings. Cause Jesus, you don't owe me anything more than anything that you can do. I just want. Tell him, I just want you. I just want you and nothing else. And nothing else, Jesus, nothing else will do. I just want you and nothing else. And nothing else, Jesus, nothing else will do. I'm caught up in your presence And I just want to sit here at your feet I'm caught up in this holy moment I never want to leave Just tell them, say I'm not here for blessings I'm not here for blessings Cause Jesus you don't owe me anything And more than anything that you can do I just want you Just tell him one more time, say more than anything more than anything 
that you can do I just want you Psalms 27 4 says I have asked one thing from the Lord it is what I desire to dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life gazing on the beauty of the Lord and seeking him in his temple Hope that helps y'all out today, and we are praying for you, and let's get back to worship. You sing, there's nothing worth more. There's nothing worth more that will ever come close. Nothing can compare your living. Your presence, Lord, sing, I've tasted and I've seen, and I've tasted and seen of the sweetest of loves, where my heart becomes free, and my shame is undone. Sing Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come flood this place and feel the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for. To be overcome by your presence. I've tasted and seen I've tasted and seen Of the sweetest of loves When my heart becomes free And my shame is undone Your presence, Lord Sing holy you are welcome here. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come flood this place and fill the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for. To be overcome by your Tell him, say, let us become, let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your goodness. Let us become more aware of your presence. Let us and fill the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for, to be overcome by your presence, Lord. Just tell them one more time, say your glory, God. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for, to be overcome by your presence, 
Lord. Wow, guys, I'm sure y'all just enjoyed that powerful worship set. And uh, also hearing from some of our guys, look, by now, I've been hearing some great reports uh, on the groups and how things are going. We're connecting with people. We're all coming together digitally and online and uh, through multiple ways. We're doing Zoom calls. We're doing Snapchat groups. We are doing group me's. We're doing you our YouTube channel is going great. Man, I'm super excited and pumped up at what God's doing in our groups. And uh, that worship right there was just powerful. And, and I, I hope you, that you felt that as well. And uh, we're just, we're really excited about that. So, you know what we talked about last week? Last week we talked about doubt, uh, and we talked about doubting our worth and doubting who we are, and we know that's a struggle. But Tara's going to give you a little recap uh, and, and kind of give you a little heads up of what we're talking about this week. Tara? So last week we kind of talked about doubting ourselves, and hopefully now this past week you and your group have kind of discovered ways on how Christ really does strengthen you and, and that you're more confident in that and that you do trust what the Lord says about you. Um, and because... I mean, just the simple fact that greater is he that is in me than he that is in this world yes, and the lies the that he would try to pour into you about not being worthy and um, just pouring all this doubt onto you. That's and right. so doubting ourselves is one big way that, um, that doubt grips our life. But another way people struggle with doubt is just doubting God and what he'll actually yes. do and like really doubting all, his, all that he does. And there's some things that people struggle more with um, than others concerning the Lord and, and just different things that He will and will not do. So mm -hmm. that's something we want to share with you all this week. Right, and hey, if this is something that applies to you, why don't you drop that emoji at the bottom. You know the hand raises, like, hey, hey, that's me. That's talking mm -hmm. to me. If that's you, drop that emoji down at the bottom uh, just so we just so we know. And um, also, would you please share, like uh, this video, comment, um, tell your friends about it, groups. If y'all are getting, uh, if y'all are scheduling times to watch this, hey, Get a good time to watch this because we're talking about doubting his faithfulness. Um, but he is faithful. He is faithful. <laughs> he is very. He is faithful 100% of the time. Take it to the bank. He's never going to let you down. By Always the end of this, faithful. Or by the end of the week, you're going to know it. Y yes, you are going to realize that. And by the end of all of this coronavirus stuff, mm -hmm. we're definitely going to know that in the midst of all of that uncertainty, God still does really remain faithful. Hey, look, doubting God is a fight that we deal with, and it's something that always seems to get worse whenever times get dark. Look, something about me just personally that you can know is that when I was your age and when I was a student, man, my highs were really high, but my lows were really low. And, I mean, it, it was a harsh reality. And I'll tell you this, student, as, as me being not much older than you, when I was a student, I lived for those Wednesday nights. I mean, I would go from Wednesday to Wednesday to Wednesday. But see, the in-betweens, I would, I would drop off, and I'd be waiting to get that lunch back for that next Wednesday service. Yeah. And um, I, I realize that's a struggle that we struggle with. And I realize that peer pressure is a real thing. And I realize that we're going through some hard things at school. But just because things get hard, I don't want you to doubt God's faithfulness because He's 100% true, going to be faithful all the time. Yeah. However, to us... And to everyone, when we're walking through valleys, sometimes God seems distant. Do you know that in between the Old Testament and the New Testament, there were 400 years in which they say God was silent? God was actually not silent. His fingerprints were, were uh, you know, shaping humanity the whole entire time. Yeah. There will be times in your life where you feel like God's not there. You'll feel like God's silent. Maybe that He has left you. Maybe He's forsaking you. And that He's just not there. But the simple fact is that's just not true. Tara, have you ever had a time in your life where you've just felt like, you know, I, I don't feel God right now? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah and, oh, yeah, and that's one thing that since we're not having Wednesday night services, we don't want you to have to experience that. We don't want you to have to, because we're missing these services together, we don't want the momentum of what God's doing in your life, we don't want that to, to cap off. We don't want that to just, just be limited because we're not meeting. But right where you are in your room, right where you are on your, on your phone or on your tablet, we are believing that we'll, we'll begin to show you a little bit about what God's faithfulness really means throughout this, throughout this session today. Um, and let me tell you somebody who had a real low low, and that was Daniel. Uh, Daniel was thrown to a real low place in a lion's den. <laughs> and if, if anybody had a time to fear, if anybody had a time to uh, worry, to stress, 
I would think Daniel would be able to press that button and say, hey, I have a right to do this, wouldn't he'd, you? He'd drop the emoji. Yes, he would, he would definitely be dropping that emoji right now. <laughs> Daniel would be dropping the hand raise emoji because he had a stressful time, and he went through a very, very uh, tough spot with the lion's den. And you may think, oh, this sounds like something that we used to talk about in kids' church. But listen, it's, it's honest, okay? It's something he had to go through and something he had to learn from. And, you know, Daniel did, and he, he could have, you know what, he could have pulled it, he could have doubted, he could have doubted God's faithfulness, but he didn't. He didn't doubt God. Right. He still believed. He kept his faith first. He, he, he didn't doubt. He didn't let doubt overtake him like we're talking about, like you see behind me. Um, he did not let doubt have control in that moment. But his faith persisted, and that's kind of a carryover from what we talked about last week. You've got to let your faith have a driver's seat. You've got to let your faith be number one, um, and you've got to let that rule over doubt. So something about Daniel is that his doubt, honestly, probably could have cost him his life. Oh, yeah. If Daniel wouldn't have had the faith to believe God that he was going to be safe, if Daniel would have doubted or he would have let fear have the driver's seat, I don't even want to think about what the lines would have did to him in the lines then. Right? I don't even want to go there. But he kept his faith number one. He kept that faith first, and he, and he believed that God had his best interest at in mind. And so, guys, look, even when you're in a valley, even when things aren't going good, you cannot doubt God's faithfulness. Right. You know, we talked about last week, we doubt ourselves, and we, we, we shouldn't do that because we do have worth. But, guys, we, have, we, cannot, we cannot get by with doubting God. Yeah. Um, by no means. Um, there are times in my life to where I haven't felt God like I, like I have in other times. There have been valleys. There have been some bad things happen to me to where it seemingly was like, you know what, God's not there. He's, he, he's not here for me. He's not working on my behalf. But that's just simply not the truth. Right. So if you are in that bad time, you know what, guys, students, <laughs> this coronavirus is a, is a nasty thing. It really is. And I know that the, the reports are that, hey, People our age, we're, we're fine. It's not affecting us. And look, y'all are shouting and, and hooping and hollering and getting together with your friends because you're out of school, right? School's out. Um, but let me tell you something and warn you against something. Peer pressure is still going to be very much so there. Um, students are, have a lot of more free time now to get pulled into things um, that will pull you away from Christ. Yeah. Never doubt his faithfulness. If you've been pressured to do something, or if you're in a dark time right now, I want you to reach out to a group leader. I want you to reach out to one of us. We want to be there for you. We will do whatever it takes to meet you where you are and do whatever it takes to help you get out of your certain situation. Um, and we're committed to doing that. We love you guys. And you know what? Don't doubt God in this time right now. Um, have, have faith in Him. Let me tell you something. Even if it's a place that you are in, even if we are talking right to you, even if you felt like, man, I didn't wear my boots, He's talking right to me right now. <laughs> Like, listen, I want to tell you something. Even if you are doubting God, even if you are doubting His faithfulness right now, maybe even going back to last week and you're still doubting yourself. Let me tell you somebody who, who experienced doubt um, but had, a, had a, a positive experience from it afterwards, and that's Peter. Man, Peter, he, he, had, a, he had a very low moment. And uh, he had a couple, actually, he had a couple low moments throughout his life. One of those low moments was... Um, whenever he stepped out on the water. And Peter did, in fact, walk on, walk on water. But as soon as his vision got away from Christ, and as soon as he began to doubt, and he let doubt creep in his life, um, what did he begin to do? Sink. He began to sink, right? He didn't maintain walking on water. He didn't stay there. He dipped down. He began to go down. And sometimes in our spiritual walks with Christ, we do begin to experience that dipping down. And a lot of times that comes as a result of you making a bad decision. Sometimes that comes a, a, as a result of um, some bad choices of your friend group, right? There are a lot of things that can enhance that downward motion and that downward spiral that sometimes we feel like our lives are in. Let me remind you of something, though. Even though he doubted, what did Jesus do for him? Walked straight up to him. And he reached down and grabbed him right where he was. Exactly. He, he walked over to him and he did what it took to get Peter wherever he was. And you know what? Jesus actually asked him in Matthew 14, 31, what little faith you have. Why would you let doubt win? Students, let me ask you a question. Why would you let doubt win? Don't let doubt overtake you during this time, right? 
people love you. This group loves you. Tara and I love you. Whatever you're going through, whatever you're facing during this time, don't let doubt win. Yeah. Let me just give you a reminder that you are the church students. You are the church of today. And don't let this distance from this four walls in this building, don't let the distance uh, and the, the, you know, because we can't be here, don't let that stop you from being the church. Tara, why don't you just tell them different ways that they can still be the church in their homes and, and in their friend groups and in their uh, prayer groups that they're split up in? Yeah, just share your story with someone. Share how God really has been faithful. Um, and if you're in that low point in your life and you're not really sure that he's being faithful, I promise you that he is. And all you have to do is really dig into your word and, and like he said, reach out to a group yes. leader. Reach out to one of us and, and we'll, we'll help you through that. We'll, we'll help you, like whenever you, um, whenever you get in touch with the Lord and whenever you really start to see how he is working, like it changes your perspective on things and you are able to see that. So yes. use the people around you. Use the resource. Yes. Use the Bible. Read your Bible. Study. Pray. Get in touch with one of us and, and we'll help you out. Yes. And guys, I think you probably by now you are should be around halfway over your Bible, your Uversion Bible app reading plan. You should be about halfway or maybe over halfway through that Bible reading plan now. Take with those words to heart. And that verse, I, I'm going to repeat it one more time just for you. And that was Matthew 14, 31 that says, What little faith you have, why would you let doubt win? Yeah. Students, don't let doubt win. During this time of uncertainty, uh, you know, uh, Doubt cannot have control in our lives, and we're not going to let it. Yeah. We're going to stand for the truth, and we're going to stand on, on Jesus yeah. and what the Word says and the promises in this Bible and in this Word. Yeah. Guys, we love y'all. We're going to be tuning out. Hey, if you, need, if you have any prayer requests, we want you to comment your prayer request. Mm -hmm. We want to pray with you. We want to meet, meet you where you are. Um, also, Tara and I have mentioned multiple times just throughout this session that we want you to connect with your group leaders and, and be able to trust them. Yeah. Guys, I've had multiple meetings with your group leaders. They love you. Yeah. They care about you, and they want to see the best of you during this time. So reach out to them. Let them help you. Let us help you. We love you. Don't doubt God, and don't doubt His faithfulness, because He will be there every single time uh, that you have doubt. He will be there. He is there. Wherever you are right now, just trust God. He'll, he'll get you out, and we're going to make it through. Students, we love y'all. We're, we're signing out for tonight. Uh, you're going to be seeing some more later this week. We love y'all. Tara, will you close us in prayer? Yeah. Awesome. Lord, we thank you, God. Lord, we just thank you, Jesus. Lord, I pray for every student watching, God, that you would just begin to bless them in their homes right now. Begin to bless our groups right now, Jesus. That they'll begin to become more unified. That they'll begin to be uh, more in tune with you, Jesus. Lord, we just pray for their faithfulness, God, and that they'll continue to dig in your word, trust you for all things. And I speak to doubt in their lives, and I command it to leave in the name of Jesus. We command all doubt to leave. Lord, bring us together in this time of digital connection. And Lord, I, I thank you for this opportunity that we have to reach students in this church and outside of this church and of this youth group. Lord, I thank you, and I love you. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. See y'all later. Hey, guys. Thank you for watching. Um, I hope you enjoyed the service. I hope you enjoyed worship. I hope you thought it was really great. Um, if you have any prayers, you can put them in the comment section below, and I'm going to close prayer. Dear God, I thank you for everything you've done. I thank you for allowing us to connect every service. I appreciate everything that you've done for us, God. Your love is so great. I hope you continue to touch us and bless us. In Jesus' name, amen.